So let's kick off with making our first beat in Reason Compact. Um, so that's this little chap here. Bump. You open it up and that is what you get. Um, but for complete clarity, let's let's try again. If you go to this little file icon up the top here, I don't know, the quality of the video is probably going to be pretty poor. Um, and I'm pretty sure the audio quality of these videos is terrible as well. But maybe gradually I will uh, invest in a better microphone and some some better better kit. But for now, let's just let's just crack on. Um, if you start here by pressing that little file thing, this is where you get your your kind of folder with all your stuff. You can see there's an awful lot. God, there's more things than I thought I had in here actually. Gives you some idea of how much I've been at it with this thing. So I started using it on the 30th of May 2019, and there's probably. I don't know what, 50, 60 odd ideas. So let's start a new one here. There's, uh, just try and see if you can see that. New project, bottom, boop. There we go, brings up that little interface. Um, and what you've got there is effectively a drum machine at the top. You've got a lead synth and a bass synth. Um, today we'll talk about the, the drums to start with. Um, but it's, you can see it's really simple. It's kind of got a little virtual sort of rack mount thing. I don't know if you can see those little uh, um, sort of screw hole things, but it's sort of based around a traditional 19 inch studio rack system. Although obviously these are just software things on the top of it. Um, but I guess the idea is that in time they might add some extra um, some extra synths and some extra, extra functionality. Um, although I had a meeting with uh, the Reason company um, in Stockholm at the end of last year, and they told me that they didn't actually have any plans for really boosting the uh, the the mobile version of this. So maybe this is what we're stuck with for a while. Um, but before we get into the instruments, there's a few settings that you just need to be aware of, and those are these three little three little dots at the top here. Uh, if you just click on that, um, tempo, scale, metronome, note grid, restore purchases, Ableton Link, background audio, and export. I'll just quickly explain what these are because you only need to know what a couple of them are. Tempo, if you touch on it, is basically how fast the track is. Um, 130, which is what it was defaulting to on this project, is fast. That is a bit slammy. Um, so let's let's wind it back a bit to about 120. Um, I'll talk about tempo and how that all works in a future video. But as an absolute rule of thumb, if you go down to about 90 or 85, that's kind of kind of groovy, kind of upbeat, kind of hip-hop speed, 100, similar kind of thing, a bit faster. 120 is the kind of traditional house music kind of tempo, um, although it's gradually got faster over, over the years. Um, and then 131 up to about 100, and, sort of up 130s is probably about as fast as a as a kind of techno track would go before sort of verging into gabber and nosebleed territory. So for today, let's just uh, let's crank it back to 120. Okay, done. There we go. Let's go back into that again because the next thing to talk about is the scale. Now that that scale is the same as key. Um, so if you click on it again, it's kind of odd because it's on this slider thing. It doesn't give you the actual notes of of what you're actually dealing with. It just has the letter and a slider thing. So. The notes are on a keyboard. Um, again, if anyone's interested, I can explain in a bit more detail how this actually works, sort of as in a keyboard scale. But basically, middle C is usually the kind of ground zero for left and right on the keys. It's the sort of middle point of the, of the pitches on a keyboard. Um, but here, you know, I can't even remember where C is. It's probably down. Yeah, it's down the end here. And then you go C, D flat, D, E flat. E, so it's going C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So that's a whole octave with all the different sharps and flats. And then you can do major or minor by literally just highlighting major or minor. So let's go with minor. Let's go with something random like... Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. G flat minor. Cool. G flat minor. How about that? So now we're set up. We know that we've got a track that's going to be 120 beats per minute. It's going to be in G flat minor. We could just crack on and, and build the track. But just for completeness, um, metronome is just a, set, a setting that makes a ticking noise to keep you in time. Note grid is scale. Um, that means that when you're in the musical elements, um, that's the bass synth and the uh, lead synthesizer, um, it doesn't actually have like a chromatic keyboard. It has it, it changes the little keys you can press so that you can only press the ones that are in the scale so you can't play any wrong notes. Very handy. <clears throat> Restore purchases is 
pretty basic. If you buy little sound packs for this, which you can which you can purchase, um, this just winds them back onto your computer from your account. I've never done it. I don't really need to because I've got the main Reason uh, desktop version. Ableton Link is a way of syncing what you're doing on this with somebody else who's got a who's got either um, a compatible um, app, which could be this app. Reason Compact, or it could be any other that's Ableton Link compatible, and it sets up a real-time link, so you can jam with other people in real time and actually, you know, create music on the go live, um, just by using a, a, a Wi-Fi signal to connect you to other people. It's very cool, um, but obviously I don't have any friends um, or collaborators, so I haven't actually tested that. But I'd love to do it sometime. Um, background audio, no idea what that is. Don't really care. Um, export. Ba -bum. So here we go. Once you've finished your track, you can either export it as a Reason file, which is what I do. Um, that gets you up onto the uh, into the main desktop app so that you can add many, many more tracks, many, many more effects, and you can really finish the, 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 the tune into a proper uh, releasable version. Um, but if you don't have Reason, it doesn't matter. You can still export the track as a sound file. Um, I think the option, yeah, here we go. So you've got the options here where you can dump it out as to AirDrop or as an email or, or whatnot. Um, and Sound Preset allows you to export sounds you've developed in the app um, and basically use them for, you know, in other contexts with reason. Okay.